What's up, everyone? My name is Pastor Kevin, and I'm so glad to see you today at another incredible week at Hope Kids Online. This month, we've been finding out how to drop the act and show others who we really are. We don't have to act like someone we're not. We don't have to hide who God made us to be. With His help, we can be brave, honest, and true. Let's all be honest, though. Have you ever done the opposite and were dishonest? It didn't feel good, did it? Here's the good news. Because God is always trustworthy, He knows that we can be truthful so others can trust us too. So this week, when you find yourself moving towards saying or doing something that isn't truthful, think about how your actions might lead others not to trust you. And then live with integrity because integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. Hope Kids is having an amazingly fun event at the end of this month called Trunk or Treat 2020. And if you missed last week's special episode of Hope Kids Good News, we're gonna share it with you now. So let's check in with Dylan and HKGN and learn more about what's happening. Hello everybody, and welcome back to another exciting week at HKGN. I'm Dylan Foley, and I came in to share a few of the good news today. We are so excited to announce that at Hope Kids, we will be hosting a free and safe Halloween event for our community. It's Hope Kids Trunk or Treat 2020. We will be having a drive through trunk or treat event with lots of candy and even a costume contest with prizes to be won. This will take place on Halloween night, October 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. Here's where you come in. We can't do this without your help. And there are three ways you can help us put on this amazing event. First, we need people who are willing to host and decorate a trunk and pass out candy during the event. The joy on the kids' faces is well worth your time and effort. Secondly, we need lots of candy donations. If you are willing to donate candy, please drop it off at the church office anytime between Monday and Friday from nine to five. Last, but certainly not least, we need your help to get the word out in our community. Please invite your friends and neighbors and share the event on your social media platforms. If you want to sign up for a trunk or need any other information, please email Mr. Kevin at kevin at hopepd.org. We are so excited about this event because it gives us the opportunity to serve our community with the love of Jesus in a fun and safe environment. Thank you for joining us for another special edition of HKGN. Now get out there and be the good news in the world. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, Dylan. We at Hope Kids are hoping to see you all on October 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. And don't forget to tell all your friends and family. Are you ready for a game? People apparently love pumpkin spice so much that marketing geniuses have pretty much pumpkin spiced the world. These pumpkin spice wizards are cranking out pumpkin spice flavored products at an alarming rate. And since we're learning about integrity, let's be honest, we all kind of love it. See, if you can figure out if the following products have been pumpkin spiced or not, have fun.
That was weird. Who knew there were so many pumpkin spice creations? Y'all did a good job of guessing. Now let's transition to my favorite part of the message. I'm so thankful that we can trust God no matter what. He's always the right one to follow, especially in telling the truth. Jesus said this in John 8, 31 and 32. If you obey my teaching, he said, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Let's sing this song together and tell God that because of him, we are set free to worship him every single moment, every single day. truthful is not just about the lie you tell and the consequence you might receive. When you don't have integrity, people will start to see that you're not really who you say you are. In week three, we head to 2 Kings 5, where we find the prophet Elisha and his servant named Gehazi. Gehazi sees the chance to use dishonest to take advantage of Naaman's gratitude and gets riches for himself. He went behind Elisha's back, denied his actions, and inevitably lost Elisha's trust. Check out more in today's true story from the Bible. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5. Naaman was the commander of the army of Aram, one of Israel's greatest enemies. Forward, march! Though Naaman was a wealthy man, he had one problem that no doctor could solve. He had a terrible skin disease. 
Ah, make it go away. Then Naaman heard news of a prophet in Israel, Elisha, who might be able to help. But instead of going straight to Elisha, Naaman took rich gifts to the king of Israel, along with a letter from the king of his own land explaining how important he was. The king of Israel frowned as he read the letter from his enemy, the king of Aram. I am sending my servant Naaman to you with this letter. I want you to heal him of his skin disease. What? N no! I I I'm not God. Your king is trying to pick a fight with me. But I, I just no, want- No, this thing, not this thing. La, 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 la. The king of Israel made such a fuss that Elisha heard the news and sent a messenger. It was probably his trusted servant, Gehazi. I am a good guy. <laughs> Trust me. Gehazi took Elisha's message to the king. Elisha says, tell the man to come to me. Gehazi raced back home to help Elisha prepare for the important visitor. And sure enough, the king of Israel sent Naaman straight to their doorstep. <laughs> Gehazi peeked out the window. Look how low the chariot is riding. What's in the back? Embroidered robes and bags of something? Gehazi. Hurry up, you gotta look good for this guy. I'll, I'll get you your best robe. Nope. You're not wearing the robe? I'm not going out. Not going out? No, you are. But my robe? What's wrong with your robe? It's old. It's not even a decent name brand like Melchizedek or Queen Jezebel. Elisha sent his servant out the door with a message for Naaman. Are you the prophet? Uh, no. But l let me just say that is one excellent chariot. I, I see you got the golden hubcap. Where's Elisha? He says, go, wash yourself in the Jordan River seven times. Then your skin will be healed. You will be pure and clean again. Oh, uh, I thought Elisha would come out himself. I know, right? Look, can't he just say some words and wave his hand and, you know, make me better? That's what I was thinking, too. Uh, and the Jordan River? I mean, it's full of muck and tadpoles and... Oh, forget it. <laughs> Naaman tore off, angry but his servants convinced him to follow Elisha's instructions. Naaman dipped seven times in the murky Jordan River, and when he rose from the water on his seventh time... What? His skin was perfectly clean. He was healed. Unbelievable. Naaman raced back to Elisha's home. This time, the prophet came outside along with Gehazi. Naaman marveled at his unmarked arms and hands. Now I know that there is no God anywhere except in Israel. Please take a gift from me. Gehazi inched closer to the chariot. He could see the richly colored robes hanging over the bags of gold and silver. Is that a genuine Melchizedek robe? Uh-huh, the real deal. Just have your servants unload around back and I'll... Nope. I serve the Lord. You can be sure that he lives. And you can be just as sure that I won't accept a gift from you. What? Please, I'm begging you. He's begging you, Elisha. But Elisha still refused to take a single coin from Naaman and send him away in peace. Elisha went back inside, leaving Gehazi speechless on the doorstep. What? No, seriously? Gehazi could still see the dust kicked up by the horse's hooves. Elijah should have taken something. If he didn't want it, he could have just given it to me. With that, Gehazi took off running down the road. His arms pumped and his sandals flapped as he crested the hill and came up alongside the chariot. Naaman pulled it to a halt. Is everything all right? It's fine. Fine. <sighs> but I... Master sent me to say that uh, 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 two young prophets have come to visit. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, please give them 75 pounds of silver and two sets of clothes. Oh, of course. Take twice as much. Naaman's servants carried the heavy bags of silver and clothing back up the road. But as they approached Elisha's house... Hey, thanks. <laughs> I got it from here. Straining beneath the weight of his heavy load, Gehazi snuck inside and stashed the clothing and silver in his room. Then he hurried back out and strolled through the front door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Can't whistle. Elisha studied him with sharp eyes. Where have you been? Oh, me? I didn't go anywhere. Didn't my spirit go with you? I know Naaman greeted you. I know you took money and clothes. I was just being nice to the horses, making their load lighter. You and your family after you will have Naaman's skin disease. But th then I can't wear my new robes. Sure enough, Gehazi's skin was soon covered with sores, just like Naaman's was. Gehazi's lie had won him some new clothes, but it had cost him Elisha's trust and a full and healthy life. That was a pretty crazy story. Can you believe Gehazi just lied like that? I bet Elisha must have felt pretty hurt when his trusted servant lied to him. If you think about it, God is always trustworthy. So it makes sense that he thinks it's important for us to be trustworthy too. We may think we're being sneaky when we take something that doesn't belong to us, or if we tell a lie to get what we want, but God always knows the truth. And remember, Jesus proved that we can always trust him too. He always did exactly what he said he would do. He gave us the best example of what it means to be trustworthy and truthful. He showed us his words and actions, what it looks like to live with integrity. You can choose to be a person of integrity. That way others will know they can trust you. Bottom line, when you're not truthful, you lose trust. Thank you for joining us this week. If you enjoyed today's message, please be sharing our message with all your friends and family. Ask them to subscribe to our Hope Palm Desert YouTube page so they don't miss out on any of our weekend messages. Remember that we at Hope have messages for all ages and all walks of life. I'd love to hear from you this week. Reach out to me and let me know how we did and how this story might have impacted your life. And lastly, help us make an impact in our community and reach out to me as we would love your help and your donations to our Hope Kids Trunk or Treat. Simply email me at kevin at hopepd.org or text or call me at 760-567-6973. Otherwise, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this message. Thank you for teaching me what trust looks like and how when I don't lie and I live with integrity, people can trust me just like they trust you. Help me to be more like you. I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. Thank you.